Augmented reality frameworks such as ARKit and ARCore didn't release with occlusion from the get-go, nor Meta when they first released pass-through a few years ago with the Quest 1. Well, today I would like to introduce you to the Meta Dev API, which is joining Meta's presence platform tools and can help you in adding a great level of realism to your mixed reality experiences by occluding digital objects with the real world. So what can you really do with occlusion, you might ask me, right? Why is it so important for mixed reality? Well, let me show you a few examples which I think you're going to find very helpful with the Quest 3. All right, guys, so here's where we start scanning the area, specifically because with occlusion, we're going to need that scene understanding so that we can occlude Objects is one of the main reasons why occlusion works so well is because now we have the depth cameras in the Oculus 3. You can see here on the edges that it shows the character actually hiding and basically is occluding. In this case, with the plan, you're gonna see that right now I have the soft occlusion turned on. Now it's turned off. Now if we basically set it to hard occlusion, you can see the basically the hard edges on the plan. And you can also see here where I pass my hand, we have a soft occlusion. Also soft occlusion is still turned on. So hard occlusion, it's a little bit more rough, but it performs a lot better. On my research, I found that it was performing a lot better, less GPU, less usage. So it really was not as intensive with the experience that I built, but you can see on the stats that GPU it's going up when the occlusion is turned on. So here's just multiple objects using soft occlusion. And honestly, this was really, really fun to work on. The diamonds, the particles, everything has the occluder materials that the Dep API provides. This is a great example of using particles and how the table is occluded. I also did the same thing with the guitar. I went a step back and you can see how it's occluded with the real table, the physical table, which is really, really cool. And it's going to be adding a lot of depth to your experiences. I really recommend testing this out. It's available now. I'm gonna be putting the GitHub repo below. There's another example here with particles, also with the cup, how it's basically been occluded. And then this one is really cool because it occludes based on the object. So in this case, you can see hard occlusion, even on the logo, and also soft occlusion here on a different object. So you can toggle those. In this other demo, I wanted to test occlusion with hard and soft at the same time. You can see how it looks different depending on the occlusion type that we are selecting. Let's go ahead and create a brand new project to test the Dep API features. And we're gonna go into File and then Build Settings and switch it to Android, because we're going to be doing this for the Quest 3. And some of this is gonna go really fast because I'm trying to fast forward everything, but now go into Package Manager and then Project Settings. Make sure that we add the scope for Meta. And this is something that is really helpful because there's different packages that you can access from this MPN you know, scope. And we're not gonna use them all in here, but these are just some of the ones that are currently available in this list. You can also clone the Dev API. There's also one for URP. I'm going to be linking those below. And know that the Oculus XR plugin Dev, that one is going to be the one required. Then we're gonna be downloading the Oculus integration. Just click on import. And again, this process is gonna take longer. I'm just going to go as fast as I can so that you don't have to wait for that process to finish. Once you get it downloaded, then simply go into the sample scene and we're gonna be just go ahead and renaming that to something different so that we know that we're going to be implementing the Dep API. Then we're gonna be adding the OVR camera rig as well. So just drag it and drop it. I'd remove that main camera because it's gonna have a camera. And also these are some of the components that are currently available. Let's go ahead and check the Quest 3 as well. And here we're gonna be adding other settings that we're gonna need. We're gonna need pass-through because that's why we have the Dep API. I'm also going to be changing the scene support to require and then also allow controllers. And hence, make sure you enable the experimental features and you also enable pass-through here on the inside pass-through. Once you get those all set up, then you should be able to get the minimum requirements for this project and then just add the OVR pass-through layer with underlay so that we can have pass-through in this Unity implementation. Also, if you go under packages, there's one for the one that we installed. There's gonna be a list of shaders in here. 
one for one with particles and then one for standards and then just go ahead and drag and drop the environment the occlusion is going to be the one that actually gets the depth texture from the os and then applies the actual occlusion if there is a hard occlusion and also a soft occlusion hard it's going to be less intensive and then soft is going to be more intensive on the cpu and gpu just keep that in mind then just go ahead and download the robot hero pbr hp poly r this is going to be an asset that i really like using it's really cool it has a lot of different animations and this is going to be the one that we're going to use for this demo and then the demo that we're going to be building in just a few minutes so the next thing just go ahead and add a new folder and this one's going to be for anything that we do with third party all right so the next thing that i'm going to do is let's go ahead and look at these different prefabs so there's a pbr character and this is going to be the one that i'm going to be using they also have an hp character and when I say they, the creator of this asset and also a low poly. So I'm just going to use the PBR character and you can see it looks really, really cool. Then what I'm going to do is just reposition everything, make it about that too. I think 20% of the original size is fine because we're dealing with a smaller measurements. And then just go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. Then I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the gizmo here. So we should be good. It's positioned correctly. Go into build settings, player settings. And then this used to be a list of things that we needed to do manually. Now Oculus added this validator and it's just going to tell you here everything that we need to apply so that we can satisfy the pass-through experience with Dev API and scene understanding that we're building. Let's go ahead and apply everything. I just already went through it. Looks like everything works just fine. Just go ahead and apply it. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I think 20% is too large. So the next thing the shaders that are available, you're going to have to apply it to, to your model. In our case, we have a PBR material assigned the occlusion standard and also the occlusion particle one, which is going to be for things like fire, fog, and so on. Let's go ahead and rename our character to be player. And I'm also going to be assigning the player tag. And then we can just make it a prefab as well. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and add some fire. And this is a fire that came from the Dave API examples. It has uh, occlusion particles material, and I'm just gonna go ahead and set it up so that you guys can also use it. And this doesn't have the material assigned because I added it from another prefab, but we're going to be fixing that here by just assigning the missing material. Let's go ahead and drag the fire into the material in the particle system. And then now it should look okay. And it also has the occlusion particle standard only, which is the one that is available with the standard pipeline. And then we can just reposition everything. So just go ahead and change the z-axis, the x-axis, and also the y-axis on the position. And then again, these are the different occlusion components, uh, occlusion type that we have available. I'm also going to be adding an occlusion toggle that was implemented by Meta. And all it does, it basically gets that component and then it toggles what the occlusion type is going to be. You guys can see here, I'm getting the environment dev occlusion controller and this again was developed by meta i just want to make sure that they get the proper credits and then these are all the different enums available for the occlusion type also we're capturing the wrap button the a button on the controller and then when that happens we basically go through and update increment and update the actual occlusion type so the next thing that i'm going to do though is let's go ahead and set up scene understanding and it's actually pretty, pretty easy to do we go, we're going to be adding an OVR scene manager. And then once you add the manager and drop it, you're gonna see that we also have an invisible plane and also an invisible volume that we're going to add to the OVR scene manager properties. And these are the different colliders that we have for the invisible plane. And also he has a GUI and the same thing with the invisible volume. The next thing that I wanna do though, is we need to enable experimental features on the device. So just make sure that you access your adb.exe I normally go through the SDK that is installed as part of Unity, which is what I'm doing right now. And then if you go into platform tools, there's going to be an adb.exe. You might have this as part of your environment variables. In my case, I didn't, so this is how I ended up doing it. Just make sure that you have your device connected via USB-C. And then just go ahead and run this command to be able to 
use experimental features. You're gonna have to do this every time you restart. So if you restart, you're gonna have to do it again. So just make sure that you do that right away before you deploy to the actual device. All right, guys, let's go ahead and duplicate that Meta WPI character scene, and I'm gonna call it Meta WPI Platformer because I wanna create something like that with mixed reality. Go ahead and add it as one of the scenes under build settings, and we can just go ahead and close out of that. I don't need the fire because we're gonna be adding that through a controller action. I also don't need the collider. I added this so that we could have the OVR grabbable as I show you on the previous demo, and then just gonna be ending up with animator and also rigid body now let's go ahead and create a new folder and this folder is going to be for a new animator that i'm going to be dragging and dropping the one that i have right now that comes with this asset has too many things i ended up modifying that and i think that's beyond this tutorial so i just wanted to drag it and drop it and show you really quickly how it works but it's basically it has all the different actions that i'm going to be using and then a bunch of different properties that i'm passing to all these different animation states and then as far as like the rigid body, we're gonna be setting constraints on the rotation on X and Z. And also go back to your unit registry. And this is where we're going to be bringing in the new input system because I want to be able to control the character with the controller and also with the Quest 3 controller and also my keyboard. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to add an input actions. And this is what we're going to be using to pass the actions that we are capturing from the controllers and now so the ones that we're doing with the keyboard. So we're gonna be mapping everything here pretty quickly. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and drag and drop a couple of different sound effects. And I'm also going to be dragging and dropping music. These are things that I'm gonna be using in this experience. And then I'm gonna create a new script and this is gonna be the one that does most of the work for the controller, the actual rubber. Some of the variables that we use for different things in movement. Also some of the audio sources that we're going to be capturing or input actions or character controller, move info and velocity, and then all the different animations that we're going to be tackling. And then also an array of different sounds, player input actions. And these are some of the actions that I'm going to be executing whenever the character is currently moving, on move perform and also on move cancel, and also getting an instance of the character controller. And also we get the move direction here, and then this is going to be basically the idle state. The reason why I set it to run is because I want to use that animation if we're staying still and we're moving around. Also, when we go forward, when we go backward, there are gonna be some of the different actions that happen in those cases. Also, when the character jumps, when we apply, and also applying the character rotation. And also here, lastly, we're going to be applying that movement. On the character jump, it's pretty easy. I change the velocity to, to zero on the y-axis. I also check whether I'm grounded and I'm basically jumping. And then I also handle sound in here. And then lastly, the fix update is to determine if I have a platform under me that I can actually activate. Basically, the platforms are going to be falling. But basically, this is a summary. Go ahead and take a look at this script. I'm gonna be putting that on GitHub. That way you understand how it works. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and associate it with our player. I have a couple of different settings in here that I ended up changing. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this debug ground, and this allows me to test it right within Unity. It's really cool because we can test basically all of our actions. We don't wanna have this enabled when we go through the device. That way, the character doesn't stay above it. But you can see right now it's in idle. I can move back. I can also move forward, and then back, and then, you know, rotate around. And I'm reusing some of the animations. The jump sound doesn't sound right, but that's what I found, so I think that works okay for us.
All right, guys, so I hope you found that useful. I think this is going to help a lot with mixed reality, specifically adding a lot of detail and more realism when it comes to creating experiences that really, really take the user to a more immersed experience. So if you guys have any questions about occlusion, anything with development with the Quest 3, also be sure to watch the video above it where I go through the hardware and also some of the steps to get it set up with Unity. So make sure that you subscribe above so that I can bring you more videos and thank you very much for your time.